Hey, what's up you guys? I'm Caitlin from Leave Me Alone Plants and today we are going over the cute, the tiny, the Peperomia San Marino. Now, note that this video did also mention the Peperomia Rosso in this title, and while they are actually different plants, believe it or not, I know they look very similar, the care for them is going to be nearly identical. I have the San Marino right here, but I have had the Rosso in the past, and aside from the Rosso being a little more green and the San Marino being a little more gray, they are virtually identical. So with that said, if you have either of these plants or if you are looking to acquire either of these plants, then keep on watching, I'm going to tell you how to keep these guys happy and happy healthy. So I'll bring this guy closer for a quick little look. As I had mentioned, the San Marino is going to be the one that is a little more green color. And as a matter of fact, if you really are looking for one that's super gray, it's also going to come in a frost version as well. I will put a picture over here. Super cool. Now I feel like I need to start out this video by saying these guys are a little bit of a sensitive sale, if I do say so myself. I just have a lot of feelings. While they're not the most difficult plant that I've ever cared for, they definitely can be a little finicky about, well, pretty much everything. And in full transparency, I have definitely killed a couple of these in my day. So if you currently have one and are struggling with it, don't feel bad. They can be a little difficult to get right. Now, like the Peperomia Ripple, these guys are part of the Caparata family. And for those of you more knowledgeable than myself, who are fluent in Latin will know that caparata means wrinkle. At least that's what I've read it means. I don't know because I don't actually know Latin. But overall, of course, they do get that name from the little wrinkles that they have on these leaves. And overall, the leaves are very thick. In fact, they're so thick that the first time that I saw one of these, I almost thought that it was a fake plant. This plant is going to be semi-succulent and be very similar along the lines of care for the Peperomia orbifolia, if you are familiar with that guy. So starting out with sunlight, like basically all the plants that we talk about here, of course, they're going to want a bright and direct light. As always, if you're giving them too much light, which I have done, um, they can definitely get burned, especially because they are darker in color, so they're gonna really absorb a lot of that light and on the flip side if you don't give them enough light which I've also done uh, they'll kind of look sad and you'll notice that you're gonna start getting leaf drop on them um, the stems will kind of get thin and wrinkly and they'll just kind of uh, not be super happy. So for this plant in particular, I would say that you're gonna want to opt for a little brighter of a spot than not. Um, I find that these guys will throw a bit of a temper tantrum if you're not giving it to them. Whereas I know a lot of other plants that we talk about, you can kind of get away with sneaking in a moderate light. Um, I don't recommend it for these guys. So if you've got a windowsill, if you've got just a sunny spot in your house, um, that will be perfect for these. As for watering, I think watering is the part that I have gotten wrong on so many times with so many different peperomia, and to be honest, it's typically the reason why I stay away from them. In terms of soil moisture, you're kind of just going to want a consistent, even moisture without it being too wet. The root system on these plants are very fragile, so if you let them dry out too much, the roots are going to completely die back and choke out the plant. On the flip side of that, you need to be really careful when you're going in and watering this guy. You're not going to want to just take a watering can and go in and water the crown. You will absolutely rot the stems. I have also done that on many occasions and sadly killed many peperomia through doing this. I really, really recommend if you can do it, if you have the right pot for it, try bottom watering these guys. If you guys are not familiar with bottom watering, or as some of you guys so hilariously call it butt chugging. Butt chug! Butt chug! Butt chug! Um, Basically what you're going to want to do is get a little bowl of water or you can get those little plastic saucers that they sell at like Home Depot for 50 cents. Um, really just anything to kind of hold a decent amount of water. And all you're going to do is place the pot in there and as long as that pot has a drainage hole or some kind of hole or a way for it to suck up water in the bottom, it is just going to manually suck it up through the soil through capillary action. And the really great thing about this is you're going to get a super even watering throughout the soil. If you have plants in super chunky mixes, you may notice sometimes that you pour the water in and it literally just all drains through. The problem with that is typically you're going to get spots that get really well watered and then you're going to get other spots that don't get water at all. So this not only solves that problem, but also ensures that you're not going to rot the plant from the stems and have it die off completely on you. So if possible, if you have the right pot for it, I highly, highly recommend bottom watering. And if you're interested in a little more information on it, let me know and I can do a full video on bottom watering down below. Now that brings us into humidity. Now, as I mentioned, these leaves are semi-succulent and they're very thick. I personally have never necessarily run into too many issues with the low humidity that I have in my house. 
With that said, if you read about these plants, you will see it recommended that they do like a higher humidity. Um, I have no doubt in my mind that these plants would be happier if I gave that to them. But with that said, if you are like me, you live maybe in Arizona or somewhere else like the desert, um, you can definitely get away with, it, with these plants and really not suffer too many consequences. Now, additionally, these plants are also sensitive to hot and cold weather. Listen, I wasn't kidding when I said that these guys were sensitive sailing, okay? Okay. Now, if you're looking at the temperature rating, these guys really aren't going to want to go below 50, which for me personally here in Arizona isn't something that I struggle too much with, but once again, I have also killed some of these before by letting them get too hot. If you read online, it'll say the range that they don't really like to go above is around 80 degrees. I found that I can push it a little more, but really anywhere above 90 and they're really going to suffer pretty fast and basically, for lack of a better term, melt on you. So with that said, basically, if it is going to be a temperature that you are comfortable in, that will probably be an ideal temperature to keep this plant in. Now, as for propagation, you have a couple methods here. So of course, you can do just a standard division and let the plant kind of grow out from there. Additionally, you can do a stem cutting. And the really great thing about this is you don't need to go deep. You can basically just cut the stem, place it in water or place it in soil and let it root up from there. They tend to root up super fast when given the right conditions. I've seen people root these as fast as like 10 days or so. So if you're looking for a plant to share or propagate, I highly, highly recommend these. They're a great option. And not to mention, they're super fast growers. I find that these guys grow like gangbusters for me. Now, in terms of how big these guys can max out at, really, you're not gonna see much bigger than probably 12 inches inches at most um, width wise and height wise so they're not necessarily going to get gigantic but they will definitely get larger than the one that I have here. Another feature that some people either love or are super <laughs> underwhelmed by by Peperomia are the flowers that they get. Now I have a couple on this guy you guys maybe will see it right here and a new one coming out right here but I'll also put a picture over here of one with a ton of flowers on it. They're not the normal flowers that you would think of per se but more so kind of long shoots and to me they kind of look like medusa when you have a lot of them on there. They don't have a scent and they, too, and they do tend to die back pretty fast once they come out, but overall I think they give these plants a really unique look. I don't find that too many pests tend to go after these guys. I'm assuming it's just because they are such a thick leaf. It's probably not very tasty to munch on. But with that said, the biggest thing that I find is going to be your problem, of course, is that overwatering, like I had mentioned before, and rotting the stems, but also be sure that you are going around the bottom of your plant and pruning out any of those dead leaves. As you can see, the top of this plant is very clustered in here. It's very tight. And with that said, if you're letting too many things die off and just kind of sit in there, it's a great way for things to just kind of fester and get mushy and, and ultimately rot out the rest of the plant. So be sure that you are going in and you are plucking out any of that dead growth. It should be super easy for you to pull out those leaves and those flowers as they die back. And not to mention, you'll have the added benefit of your plant looking super clean that way. Well, I think that that is all that I have to go over today. But as always, if you guys have questions that I did not answer about this plant that you were hoping that I would answer, then drop them in the comment section down below and I will do my very best to get back to you as soon as I possibly can. If you learned something new today while watching this video, then don't forget to give that video a like. And if you are not subscribed to this channel yet, please consider hitting that subscribe button over there because we're always coming out with good videos and having a good time here. We'd love to have you along for the ride. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you.